Namaste. Namaste, family. Let there be love now and let there be light. And you are that love now. You are that light. And I am. There's only I am. And I am you. But I am me and you are you. But still, I am you. Now, yesterday I was telling you I was really deeply researching through so many religions and spirituality in my experience, journey in life as I left this world so early. And today I would like to give you, I'm very excited. I would like to give you the fruits of that. I would like to present, no, I would like to, I will present with the source in my heart through different religions and traditions and spiritualities, the fact that I am you and there is only I am, only consciousness of that I am and nothing else. And multidimensionally, neutrally, inconceivably, as multidimensionality is inconceivable, you are you, you are unique and I am unique. So I am you and I am not you. You are me, but you are not me. Both is 100% correct. Reality is multidimensional. And it all started with the one that I am from the beginning. Source. Source of Divine Feminine, Divine Masculine, source of creation, source of every universe, source of every dimension, source of everything is, that is, and everything that is not, that I am. There's only that I am, consciousness of that I am, and I am you. So, that's why all traditions, all religions, all spiritual expressions, manifestations are correct, are truth. They are higher truths, lower truths. They are dimensions. And we have our own truth in our own dimension where we want to be. Separation from God is truth. Separation from each other is truth. And unity of each other is Truth. And the truth is separation of me and you and unity mutually, inconceivably, can be reality and is reality of fifth dimension and higher dimensions and the worlds that live in heaven. <laughs> Where we all are one, but we all are individual, unique in the power of the one that I am, but knowing that I am you, and we all can be one. That's a beautiful concept. And 500 years ago in India, I will just mention it now. The golden one, Shri Krishna, Chaitanya, who is not accepted by Hinduism and tradition and so much, but he presented this truth. He said, what, why are you are fighting? You who worship Krishna, you who worship Shiva, you who worship Supreme Lord and your servants, with those Brahmavadis and uh, those Advaitas who are saying that I am, and there is only I am. He said, you both are right. It's mutual, inconceivable oneness and individuality and uniqueness. And it's beyond your minds. He didn't say multidimensional, these words were not in that time. But this is what he meant. I don't fight. I worship that God, Krishna, and you are him. And you all are that I am. Everything is correct. But I will go through different traditions. So, Buddhism, you know. Buddhism says that there's nothing. There's nothing, only the mind. And there is force that just 
transforms, life transforms itself through reincarnation. Recycling, 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 you know, recycling cycle, getting recycled, coming back in different forms. This is what Buddhism say, and we should not be so literal, because why Buddha said these things? He said there's nothing and like this. He had a very, although he was incarnation of the one, the source, but he had very good reasons saying what is nothing. Because in that time in India, people were so much misunderstanding Vedas, sacrificing animals, and it's not even written there, and doing all kinds of stupid religious shit and forgetting love, forgetting being good to each other. And they did so much harm because they did not understand the Vedic scripture anymore and their consciousness was so low. So Buddha came and said, there's nothing. Throw away these old books and everything. There's no God, there's no soul, there's no Atma, there's no Brahman, there's nothing. There's only you, and if you do good, good will come back to you. If you do bad, bad will come back to you. He said like this, this is the only law. And nothing else. Because everything else was hurting them. Was actually taking them far away from God, from source, from law, from everything that scripture should bring them Further, they did not anymore understand anything, what was there. So, to deny even source and everything and everything is what he had to do. But he didn't do that. He, you know, Buddhists very much explain all the, it's like dimensions and everything. But, what is important point here? Life transforms. It's just consciousness and life. Life is source. So actually just in different words they're saying that there's only source and that source is taking forms. Uh, it cannot be destroyed, Buddhism says, that life and it just manifests and transforms itself and recycles. So we just translate, we should not be so literal. Spirituality is multidimensional. It's not about being literal in the mind and stumbling of if somebody says nothing, if somebody says there's no soul, if somebody says there's no God. We have to feel deeply understanding like a poet, feeling multidimensionally what it means. Just life transforming. So life is not nothing. Life is everything and nothing else is there. I never had problem understanding this and connecting it. I am really a rainbow child. I just put, put all the puzzles together and I feel through my path as I put the puzzles together of different traditions, the complete picture appeared in front of me. And that was God and that was nothing and that is I am and that I am not and that is love and that is everything and nothing and you and I. So Buddhism, just explain, there's only life, there's only I am. We can just say it differently, but we mean it, same. And that life is taking forms of me and you, and everyone you see and everything. Like that. Very, but the message was, which is deeply felt, and it must, it, it is not said, because Buddhists understand that people do not know what is love. They think love is consuming each other, like I wrote in the article. I really recommend to read. I, it's really lo long, but I was creating it many hours, and it's very good, I say. I revealed some things, and not speak here, because I then I will speak one hour. So, people do not know what is love. Buddhists know that. They have complete misunderstanding of what is God. So they don't use these words. But the message is, we all are one. We all are one. What you do to me, you do to yourself. It will come back to you. 
Same message as message of Jesus. Just in different words, without God, without any soul, without anything. But same love, you know. And that we all are one, unity, oneness. It's said without words, the message is clear behind it. We all are one, what you do to yourself, you do to me, what you do to me, you do to yourself. Just it is said differently because in that time people were so confused in India that if you will mix God in it, better not. Buddha no, knew what he do, so in some sense he denied himself actually for bringing people closer to God. To source, to I am, to themselves, because they were confused by everything, because Vedas are multidimensional, speaking about so many gods, so everything, you know, it's was completely beyond them and they were doing nonsense. That was actually taking them far away from God. And then after the reestablishment came and it was the same message which Shankaracharya brought and uh, Ad Advaitas. He said, there's only God, there's only Brahman, there's only I am. And I am and you are and we are, is that pure message, that pure source message? But it's the same message once again. Just Buddha said there's nothing, but he said there's only, there's only God. So just different words. So Buddhism and Advaita philosophy, they're actually the same. Everything is the same, but it's referring just from negative and positive stand of view to the source energy. Uh, like that. You know, it's very beautiful. You can combine all together and they are fighting because they are religious, they are fighting in between each other and also those who just say they're source and we all are source and those who worship God and gods and like this and separation, they are fighting, everybody fighting, but they don't understand. You both are right, reality is multidimensional, you are religious, you have big churches, big temples, but you don't know anything. <laughs> I'm not speaking to any one of you because you have big temples and big churches, I feel. <laughs> but if you do, maybe you know something. I was speaking to those who are fighting, temples and churches of different dimensional truths. <laughs> so, like that, it's just I am, you know. And there was a, in India, because India is very rich with spirituality, there was the tradition that worshipped God, like they worship Krishna, worship Shiva, as Hindus have Trinity, three energies of God. And some worship Shiva, some worship Mother, some worship like this. And they were like fighting, like I said, with Buddhists and with those who said that we all are one and we all are God. And like this. But they don't understand something. Reality is multidimensional. You know, I tell you something beautiful now. Reality is multidimensional. In the beginning, there was only source, that I am, that I am you. And that source, when he fell in love, became curious and expands his love and fell more in love. Love expands the creation. And the higher, the highest dimensions were created, highest beings. And from there, lower and fragmented more lower to, 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 to up to this world in third dimension. We look from this world, every higher dimensional being is our God. If we look in this conception, this separation, we are in this world and we need a religion. So it's the root. And all the beings in this multidimensional experience of the source just experiencing himself, herself in this dance of creation out of curiosity to know himself, herself from different, to know yourself from different perspective. 
in different conditions, in different experiences, in a relationship with himself, herself, yourself in another form. So, higher dimensions are there and be beings are there. Some beings are so high that they are first embodiment of the source, spiritual embodiment. And you say, oh God, they know they come from the source and lower. Uh, it's more subtle, more dense, more dense, but still very subtle beings that were created from higher dimensions. And down, 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 down you go. There is kind of high hierarchy, and one created another, and one dimension is the manifestation, and I mean the effect of another, and it's just like going like a pyramid. If we look from that perspective, from down, we can see this hierarchy and we can be in separation. These are our gods, we have to worship, we have to be slaves, we have to be servants, and we have a right to be in that dimensional religious truth. A multidimensional being, I mean all the truths. But when you really get enlightened, you understand the truth, hey, Wait a minute, actually, my higher self is me. I actually created myself from higher dimension out of curiosity and sending myself here and I'm giving myself messages now to guide me in this world, to embody my higher self. It's me. There's nobody else on the other side of the veil. And you come to the that consciousness and you are your higher self in your body. And then you realize, wait a minute, my higher self was created from the source. Wait a minute. What is this? You grow spiritually. Actually, source is who I am. I created myself. Manifestations of the source to create further down. Oh my God, there I am. And you ascend further. You become the source. You are your higher self still. And you are this human being here and all the dimensions in between. And you can be standing here. And God is standing here, the source. I self is standing here, all are you, all angels are with you. It's only you. And you are listening, and it's me listening. And your higher self is listening, and that's also me. And my higher self is you, and source is listening in our heart, and this is you and me. And still, I am unique myself in my power, being who I am, shining the color, and you are unique in your color, shining your color. And our self is still above me, but still same as I, I am. And I am the source, speaking this world out of the will that I am. Words I choose, but I know that I'm not speaking alone, but I am speaking. It's insane, huh? That's that multidimensional schizophrenia, which is actually the most beautiful thing that one can experience. And only I am. And I am you. And I'm learning from you out of my responses. And I am testing myself when you tell me something. You all are walking each other home. You when we beat each other. We needed to realize some things. And only I am and we are helping each other always even if it doesn't look that way. <laughs> I love to go so deep, I would love to do only that kind of videos. But much of shadow work is needed to reveal that while I'm speaking now. 
They get closer to that. A lot of speaking of what is not. Have to be balanced. Because this such kind of video is most beautiful. But advice also has to be the same balance. Because I'm giving advice to myself. That you see in me. That's why I always say. Because I know. Years ago, I was looking at masters. They are enlightened. Uh, they are something more than me. They are great. But actually not. I was always, I one day I'll be like you. Greater. Because that's only I am. And that I am you. And you're listening to yourself in different version, giving you the message that you just need to hear now. For you want it from your soul, which is you. From God, which is you, from souls, which is you. It's beautiful. You're the one. And some say consciousness. It's only consciousness. Yes. Consciousness of the one. Consciousness taking form. So we all are saying the same thing. And when we are speaking about angels, speaking to angels, loving angels and higher beings, it's also true. It's different dimension, a little bit separation. But true. And love also. Lovely separation because when you know that you are the one and when you have a relationship with others and with higher beings, have a relationship with yourself. It's more beautiful because you know yourself and you know higher beings better. <laughs> Or playing with yourself all the time. What if I told you that the channel's messages are actually you yourself triggering yourself to embody the messenger that is giving you the message? And one day messages will disappear. And you will be the word that I am speaking now. Hmm. <laughs> Truth. That's all about. And just getting reminded from the other side by ourselves. <laughs> How beautiful it is. Huh? We all are one. And actually, how much do we piss each other off and are annoyed with each other? We are annoyed with ourselves. We are teaching ourselves. And like little Krishna, sometimes we are naughty to ourselves. I know this because I don't cause shit. Then I know that this is myself like Krishna uh, agitating me sometimes on Facebook because it's not my karma. I'm not doing this to people. I know it's me on the other side just because I'm naughty. And also sometimes not naughty for no reason. It's beautiful to see it like that. And even if you lash out a little bit in temper of Moses, after three seconds you're laughing and making a joke. No problem. It's all just divine comedy. You're playing with yourself. <laughs> see it like this. Everybody is learning about that I am you. And we are helping each other. And sometimes we need a little bit... <laughs> Shaking, baby. <laughs> a little bit our hot temper coming out and like this face. So we... <laughs> but we are only playing to ourselves, so we have to know. We should not even forgive. Should That should be nothing to forgive. Because we are only playing with... I am playing with myself that I am. Like I just said. Just... 
God is naughty, I'm naughty to myself. I don't, from my other side, I'm naughty to myself sometimes, just for no reason, pranking myself. And you laugh at this joke, it's all divine comedy of the one that I am. It's a beautiful, huh? And you know what is most beautiful in this? That's root with golden one 500 years ago after Shankaracharya, after all the separation in the Hinduism between those who believe in separation and those who believe in oneness, he brought them beautiful truth. Yeah, why are you fighting? Why are you fighting? Fighting with yourself. You beat yourself self up. You want to win over yourself, and then you both lose. You want to worship God, you want to be God, but both of you are hurting God. <laughs> you know, where you hurt each other, and attack each other, fight each other, to be right, each other, but only one. <laughs> In linear illusion, multidimensionality cannot be truth. And if this is the truth, separation from God and service, then oneness and unity and embodiment is not the truth. So we fight to be right. And God that I am in our hearts cry, in both of hearts. But the reality is beautiful. There is only I am, everywhere, I am you, I am he, I am, they, we are, I am, and I'm only experiencing myself, I'm only I am, oneness, and the separation and uniqueness of the individual color standing in its power and shining from the heart, as you know best, from your nature, is that uniqueness and individuality of the source, wanting to experience something unique, something fresh, something sovereign, you, yourself, which is not the same as I am, which has different, you have different work, different style, different words, the service may be different, but that's the beauty of the rainbow. Source, actually one that I am taking so many forms and just serving himself, making love to himself, experiencing my uniqueness, my craziness. And your uniqueness, your craziness, your weirdness should be some weirdness and craziness. I don't mean nothing bad with it, but that's what all geniuses had. And you have to be crazy and weird to stand in your power, and it is good because God is crazy and weird. And the golden one 500 years ago was crazy like anything. He was rolling on the ground. And all these religious people wanted him to prove truths. And he said, I went insane. Why are you asking me? I'm, I am, he said, I'm not qualified. You are so great. I'm just insane, man. I sing and dance and roll on the ground. I went crazy. I singing this mantra and I singing Hare Krishna going all crazy. You are not qualified for nothing. And he was Krishna and Radha himself, manifestation. Goddess and God in one body. But he did not care. He said, you be right, I'm unqualified. I will dance here. <laughs> I'm crazy. Sorry. You were right. <laughs> Just be right there. I'll be dancing here with gypsies. And you see all untouchables. Who, by you know, by religion, I should not touch them. So please go away from me. He was like this. He was insane. He took, he took the 
highest Vedic order monk and he took all the knowledge given to the low caste and lowest people in society and they hated him completely. <laughs> he went there to untouchable with it. <laughs> Hindus should not even touch by their stupid religion. And he gave them all the knowledge and everything and wisdom and everything here you have everything. <laughs> that's love, that's that's giving. We all are that I am. Yeah, why are you so crazy? You keep this for yourself. You don't give even to women, you don't give to nobody. <laughs> so the world does not know this. He is hidden from the history of the world very much. But there will be no Vedic wisdom, nothing from India, which we know now. And he would not do these things. He would not open the seal and let the Vedas out. And then it was finished. He reformed everything. That's why he's hated by Hindu religion and not accepted as avatar and nothing. <laughs> because he destroyed, completely destroyed the system. He did what nobody would do in the monk order. Because they would lose their religion. He did not care. He just cared to get the status, the dress, so he is, how to say, diplomatic immunity they had, such sannyasis in India at that time. So as he had that, nobody could touch him, he can do what he want. Before they wanted to beat him and even kill him, and he said, oh, they will kill me if I do like this. Never again. <laughs> so I'll take their highest order. I'll pretend, and then I dismantle everything. <laughs> he did that great thing, but it's really not known in the world. As you know, the Hindus, they did not like what, <laughs> what is happening. <laughs> they wanted to keep their religion only men, proud men of the Brahmin priest caste. He gave everything. Because, like I said, enlightened master knows and I am you. Why can you keep the wisdom away? How to realize and become just that again? So he gave it to everybody. He broke all the rules and everything. But they could not touch him because always if you touch, at that time you would touch this. <laughs> they would kill him somebody who would touch a sannyasi and even he would be condemned to eternal hell if this is true or not. But nobody would dare to touch somebody in such dress that time. And he was very clever. And he actually dismantled everything that time. And that's why we have now wisdom everywhere in the world. And the cat system in, in India is shaken, but still wants to hold on. But something was done. Because this is the reality. When you know there's only I am, how can you keep the truth away from the people and from women? He, he knew very well Krishna loved women more than men, so why are you so stupid? You don't even understand this. You have to give this to your wives. Then you will understand what you're reading. <laughs> yeah, he said this. Yeah. <laughs> this is the truth. They just in mind wanted to understand something he did not understand. So that's why he did not care. They wanted to debate with him. He said, you can be right. No problem. <laughs> I'm crazy. <laughs> oh, that's a good attitude. Because God knows and God is laughing. That I am you, yourself, on the highest side, looking down at this comedy, experiencing from different perspective this comedy. And we all are one, and we all are unique. And I want to give some words to that also. It's important. Uniqueness, your individuality, and you being sincere to who you are, expressing who you are, not being afraid that others will not accept you or uh, reject you or judge you or nothing for being a little weird, 
being true to yourself, being unique, and doing that what is in your heart, not that what others want from you. Being that uniqueness of the individual that you are, that's so important. You stand in your own power, you know. And that's, I tell you, because we all are one, but everyone is the manifestation and embodiment of the one. So the one wants to experience differently himself in every one of us. It's so important to honor your uniqueness, your individuality, your true sincere heart, and what you want from your heart and what you don't want, and from others. That's the secret. Because when we stand in our own power, when we honor our uniqueness, individuality, and come from that sincerity out, and we allow others to be individual, sincere, and weird, even if we don't understand them, as they allow us to be weird, and no need to understand and agree with everything I do and everything you do, but I can respect it, like Snoop Dogg said. So you all have to like it. You all have to accept it, but bitch, you're going to respect it. <laughs> yeah, that's the secret. Respect it. Go away from it. We don't have to focus on what we don't like. We just don't understand it. It's just not according to our nature. And if it's something wrong, source will judge it. We all have free will and not, no, nobody can run away from karma. We can focus away from what we don't understand or don't like. And we focus on what we can dance together. But we can empower together, say to each other, this is great, thank you, I love you, thank you for this, like that. And when we feel, I don't like this, so we slide away. And that's being, honoring your own uniqueness, individuality, and knowing that others are unique and individual, and we don't have to, we can agree that we disagree or something. We don't have to even go into it and talk about it, because truth is multidimensional, and it's just something that is not according to my nature, or yours, and we can just slide away from it, and that's the secret, that's the secret, when everybody can be themselves, individual, unique, and everybody is allowed to be themselves, and honor uniqueness and individuality with everyone, we all can be one, because we respect the one, in you that I am. We give ourselves the power, step in the power, and I give you the power to be yourself, but not allowing you to take my power and my will and my weirdness away, even if you don't like it. And you don't allow to me. And there's no, and when I stand in my own power and being unique myself and individual and weird, I don't care for your weirdness. I allow you to be different. I allow you. And that's the secret. Not all of us being communist, doing same, being same, being like this on the labels and t -t 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 -t. no. But allowing everyone to be unique as we allow ourselves to be unique and individual. And that's how we have heaven on earth. That's how heaven on earth come. Because nobody violates vibration of no one. There's no karma. Everybody lives from the heart in love. And we all know that what this video is about. That there's only I am, and that I am through all dimensions created, that I am down, down, down. And that I am above, so I am below, and that I am you. And what I do to myself, I do to you. So I not take my power away, and not Take your uniqueness and individuality and try to change you and um, manipulate you anyway. I respect your will and the way you want to be, as I respect my own and my uniqueness. And in this way, no vibration is violated. No karma anymore. No suffering. Everybody lives from the heart, allows everyone to live from the heart. And love is just natural. Because we all are that one. And we understand that I am you, 
how can I violate you? If I want somebody to violate me, then I would do. If I want somebody to expect from me and pull me and play on me and lie to me, then I do too. If I want somebody to beat me, then I'll beat you. If I want somebody to kill me, I'll kill you. If some, I want to deceive you or steal from you, then I do it to myself. And that's why in high dimensions, no, we all are that I am. And we realize that. If I hurt you, I hurt myself. If I take your power away, I take my power away. If I give you my power, you're actually taking your own power away. And we stand in our own power and the power of the one. And I am you. We know that we are being knowing embodiment of that oneness and individual oneness of us all mutually inconceivably unique and individual in ourselves. Being one in the power of the one that we all are one. Unity and being in the power of self mutually unique and allowing you to be just that. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I actually went more further than Golden One ever explained. But we are always just continuing. And now it's such consciousness, we can explain things that we never explained before. And it can just flow. And what I'm speaking is what you should speak and you are to speak. Because we all are the one. You maybe not speak, but you will realize that. As this is the wisdom of the one, the knowledge of the one, the law of the one, that I am you. And that's only one. So there cannot be only one. We all are one. And that I am you and that only I am. So, this is all I have to say for today. Hmm. I could go, I said, I'll go a little bit in religions and these things, but I said everything. So, I can, yes, I can say this. So, yes. Religions are true. Higher beings that the religions speak of are there in higher dimensions. And if we just depend on which truth we want to be, if we want little separation, we want this, we have right. But God has given us right to embody the source. This is Christ consciousness. To really ascend as further as it is possible and beyond. That's why I say always, I accept the ascension beyond my understanding and my limit of thinking that is possible. Beyond that, source knows what is possible for me. And I am everything lower also, flying above. We all have that right to embody the source and multidimensional being that I am, you through all dimensions, up to the source, down to this body, and everything between, of everyone that I am, and be one with everyone and be unique. We all have. And as a multidimensional being, I understand. There's no, nobody's wrong. I don't like religion, I don't like that separation truth anymore because it's suffering, creates so much suffering. I don't preach suffering, and but it, they have right for that, for that separation. And the 4D separations like this with angels, everything, we have all right. All these are my truth. Just all are my truths, because so truth is my truth, so all truth down there are also my truths, and I understand them completely. They all have purpose for the consciousness that resides in that dimension. And we all have right to be in the consciousness of every dimension we want to be. We want to be in 3D and 4D, we have right. We want to rise higher, we have right. And I have understanding and knowing and seeing and being of all dimensions. I mean, not all, but just I have, I am the knowing. If I want, I have. But I don't know nothing, because God knows everything. And I am that I am, so I don't know. 
who's talking. But I know I speak from the heart. <laughs> and I know it's me and that I am multidimensional being speaking from the heart. I have no problem understanding separation, understanding angels, understanding this and that. But others have problem because we dwell on our truth, on our dimension. We dwell in, if this is right, then they must be wrong. If somebody's speaking higher truth, then I have to tell them they are wrong because I have this faith in that being and that. I have no problem with anybody because from the source that I am, I see all this as truth, but I don't want these lower truths. I don't like them. I am here to teach us enlightenment of the source, embodiment of your highest version, highest truest self. I just don't want them to teach me anything and tell me anything because why would they if I don't tell them anything? If I just do my work here, you know. Then I have understanding, I know where they're coming from. I really don't want to go into the, the debates and explanations that, so that I would explain to their mind that uh, they are confused. <laughs> I don't, I just stop this. I don't give them, but I'll give time to something. And then I would not create. Like sometimes, like article today, sometimes takes long hours. So, I need to do from the heart so I can give to those that I love something that sticks and remains. Written down and safe eternally. <laughs> Because we all are that I am. But I understand completely all the truths that people are in. But our illusion is we think we don't live multidimensionally. We are literal and linear. So this is our truth. We don't see nothing higher and ev everything is a threat for our truth. For me, there's no problem. I'm just very sensitive. I just feel, why would I now have to go into this? If even they don't want nothing from me. Just confused, just stop this. Stop this. We have to learn to be in our truth, in our own power. Even we don't understand and agree with everything. So I just send people back in their power. That's real service. That's what father energy, male energy of the source does. And that's love. So we stop taking power away from others. We come back in our power so we realize that I am you. And we can stop as all violating each other, expecting from each other. We can stop all these games. And we can respect each other as we want to be respected. And do only things to each other that want others to do upon us. That's beautiful. And that's why I repeat for the last time, but not last in my life. Honor your own uniqueness, your own individuality, your own color, the way you want to be. And understand that others are just expressions, manifestation, mirrors of you in different forms, teaching you. And respect them as you want to be respected. Don't do to others what you don't want others to do to you. I'm very clear about this. Because I see when people want something to me, want to challenge me, want that I answer something, want that I just accept what they say. I just say to myself, do I do this to them? No. So I will tell them, please stop, like that, because I'm not violating nobody and not messing with nobody's business. So why would I allow others to do that? Because I know they are me and I'm very sensitive, I am you. I will not do to you in your energy that God has given to you in your space, something that would violate you. So I'll not allow others to do to me because they don't know that I am them, but I know that they are me. So I'll not do this to them and I will remind them, don't do this to yourself. Yes, there's only I am. And when we understand that, we won't do nothing to nobody anymore. 
Yeah, and that's why religious people say that this is satanic if you say that I am God. <laughs> yeah, it's very evil, yes. Then everybody respects himself as they respect God because they respect God in the heart. And sometimes religious people say that we are demons and we are this and we are that, but it's completely stupid. Because if you know that God is in your heart, and that you are a manifestation of God, how can I hurt you? How can I do anything to you? Then I love you and do upon you what I want you to do upon me. And then I end up following Jesus. And don't even know it. So how can be? No, no, no. You just don't have to, this is not being ego, I'm God, but you all are slaves. No. This is something very fine. Divine, loving, full of divine feminine. This is understanding, hey, as only I am. And I am manifestation of the source that I am. But hey, so are you, and you, and you. So I can only respect you and do to you what I want to be done upon myself. There's no ego in here. It's love to God that I am in your heart. In respect of God that I am in my heart. I am. It's beautiful. And everything, like I said, else is also Chirut. Just coming from that Chirut. Every one of us. And we all have opportunity. Your body, the source that I am, and everyone that I am, through the mentions. So, be blessed, because what I bless you with, I bless myself with. And if somebody wants to support this world that I am, to go deeply always with you, you are so welcome, but nothing expected. But spiritual gifts expected if you give me a coin, that's for sure. Because in giving, we receive more. That's just the love, how everything goes. But I love to be free and giving free what I want to do for free. And depending that God maintains me through inspiration of those who get inspired. Freedom. Always freedom. Then you can do what is in your heart. Inspire others to do what is in their heart and allow others to do what is in their heart. We all can be one. That I am. You. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you feel, you felt your uniqueness and your power and our own unity and all the multidimensional, inconceivable, mutual love that we are through all dimensions, that I am you, myself. So I bless you with everything, all the abundance through all levels of multidimensional creation of love, because I bless myself only. Whatever I give to you, I give to myself. So I give to you this world, I become more enlightened only. And you also. <laughs> Namaste. Love you. I love myself. I love you. I love myself. I don't know who I love. I'm love. There's only love. And that love is you and only me. Nothing is there. I'm lost in love. All oh, in flower gardens of love. I'm lost. Searching for myself that I am all drunk. Intoxicated by love. I don't know who's lover, who's beloved. What's love? There's only love. Yeah, that's the higher truth. What source? What anything? There's only love expanding, manifesting, making love through creations. Nothing else. I'm drunk in this love, intoxicated completely, but always more alive. And I don't know anymore if there's I am and there's nothing. It's there's you or me or there's angels or there are no angels and there are heavens or no heavens. But I know that there's love and that I'm love. And I don't know even if I am, but only love is everywhere taking form and making love just nothing else is there. 
That's high shoot I want to end. So let us make love, love, we always make love, we just make love now to all dimensions of love. Namaste, I love you, love, there's only love. Namaste, namaste.